All right, so here I go with my fifth evaluation for today, um, which, I don't know, might not sound like a lot, but with each of these evaluations being about 45 to 50 minutes long, you know, um, <laughs> I'm into my sixth hour and I'm still cruising and I feel great about it. So um, I have time for one more now and I will take care of it and just I'm really enjoying you know like once again just another score with great ideas very individual personality to the um, to the music okay so you know like there's a few things just kind of some general scoring that you know some general comments I would say um, <clears throat> Like maybe try to stay away from too many mezzo dynamics. There's a lot of mezzo on this page. Um, there is some balancing that needs to be done. Just a little bit of, you know, kind of like I would I wouldn't say fussy scoring, but like here we've got LV marked on every note, and you know it might be better just to have a quarter note followed by a dotted half note, right? And that. It, it, that will sound exactly the same without the need for this rather kind of fussy scoring. Or here you could you could have, you know, quarter note followed by quarter note tied to a dotted half note, right? And that would be perfectly fine. I've got a slightly um, annoyed cat in the background who's chewing on a Halloween mask. It's it's past her uh, lunchtime, so yeah. So I have to go feed her soon, but I will. We'll do a full evaluation on this, all the same. So, yeah, really nice big orchestra you're using here, just really like the full extent. Um, I don't, for some for some reason, the uh, bar lines uh, didn't break the right way. So here we go. So I'm fixing that for you, and this could have the same. All right, so that's a little easier to read, eh? Okay. Um, so let's just go straight to the orchestration and I will comment on things as I see them. All right, so we're starting off really nice. Now, this is kind of a strange element here, this little, um, this little kind of the way the pizzicato is working here. It's, it's really cool that it is punctuating every other bar to begin with, and then it kind of walks down. And then you get this like uh, leading tone down here on this A sharp. And this is like where I, you know, like it, like it, it's sort of, um, so the phrase is here, like by doing this, it's kind of like, it's almost like a dance. It's kind of like, almost like forcing somebody to use the other foot, right? So if you take this away, it's just da 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 dum, da 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 dum, right? It's like, it doesn't, but you know, da da ba da dum, da da ba da da dum, you know, so it's like, it, it kind of like, it's kind of more kind of back and forth-ish, right? Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like a, a bit of a minuet or a or a waltz, um, or like more or a pavan. You know, it's pavans are in two four, but you get you get what I mean. It's like you have to use the other foot, and then here you get to like the, like it's really underlining the sense of, uh, of five here instead of being as nebulous, right? I mean, it, it you, there's no question that we're getting to the five here, but since you know, Lily is in the sort of postmodern impressionist age, or excuse me, post romantic impressionist age. Then she, um, you know, she has a tendency to, to want to kind of soften the sense of getting to the five before going back to the one, right? So that's what she's kind of done here. And by putting that leading tone in there, you're really underlining what she's trying to avoid in her harmony. I would say, like, the same thing even here, like, like you know da 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 like here like she's like really kind of trying to understate the alternate um you know the alternating chord right by just like she's got some you know she's got some a pedal a bit of a pedal in some of these notes that become a suspension right and then um so but this is like saying no it is the other chord right so just you know pointing that out that like it kind of goes away from the from the sense of impressionist harmony and you know the kind of more nebulous more cloudy scoring there right um all right it, it's just like like the what, what's great about this 
period of scoring is the ambiguity, right? Like you can really read your emotions into, you know, it's it's, it's very uh, like impressionist, right? So it's like it is the person's impression of something, but they don't want to insert their personality into it directly, right? It, it has to be sort of like a kind of more misty, more um, more or less direct, I would say, right? So this is making it more direct is all I would say. Okay, but you know, the the only other big problem here is that you're really giving the string players enormous uh, slurs, right? So um, you have to think like how much can fit under one bow, right? Or one under one breath, right? So do you want your piccolo player to go da, right? Or do you do you think that this will like the bow is not going to last this long? So what's going to happen is the concert master is going to grab this part and just scribble out all of these lines and then just write like slur up, slur down, you know, or just like you know they might write a they might even write an up bow here, but that's for them to decide, not you. Um, but like they'll probably go slur, slur, and then slur slur up down up down up down up right so look at some of um look at my um <clears throat> uh entry <laughs> my orchestration lesson on the orchestration that i did for this okay and just kind of look at the way that i made the slurs way shorter for the string instruments <clears throat> because like like this is piano um basically piano slurs right <clears throat> and you know just these really really long slurs fitting a lot of notes under them sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't like here that's probably good except like you take away the ability of the player to emphasize these notes right like they you know if they have to slur it all together they can't really tongue on any particular note to give it that punchy emphasis that kind of real solid start right so that's kind of what's happening but <clears throat> it's it's cool that like there, you've avoided some other problems in here like you know like for instance all of these um slurred staccatos mezzo staccato are under you know are under the same slur but here like this is the same problem as i talked about a while back and that is that really mezzo staccato should be under its own slur right and then you can then the player can tongue this note with a you know they can articulate this note by tonguing rather than just by their diaphragm, right? Because right, right, what you've got now is like push, 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 push with a diaphragm and there isn't like a, they aren't like punching the note with their, you know, with the embouchure, right? It's all diaphragmatic. All right, so um, yeah, so that is a problem here too, right? It really should just be a mezzo staccato under one slur, right? Followed by it a separately articulated note. And I would even do that here, even though you're not doing mezzo staccato here. But I mean, why not do mezzo staccato here? So I just like slur here, right? And then punch on that, um, on the accent here. And they should all be accented if you're gonna accent them, right? Okay, <clears throat> all right, so let's get back to here. Now this was, I think one or two scores ago, um, one of the entrants took the time to actually write out what this means, like what each of these these dynamics mean. So, so I mean, what do they mean to you, right? Are you just, are you going from piano to mezzo piano, from mezzo piano to mezzo forte, from mezzo forte to forte, right? But then you end up mezzo piano here, right? So, so then do you mean just like piano to mezzo piano, piano to mezzo piano, piano to mezzo piano, right? So, I mean, I think that stuff can kind of be done with like, you know, I mean, it's kind of a cresting sort of a thing where it sort of pushes and then goes back down and pushes and then goes back down and pushes and so on. So I don't think that that is necessarily that clear to the modern <clears throat> to the modern player. So maybe there's just some way of rethinking this, you know, um, with like hairpins that that increase and decrease. Maybe like if there was just a little one at the end to just sort of bring the volume back down again, if that's what you mean. Right, because it's just the way that it's scored. You can sort of hear that, like the um, <laughs> the poor um, uh, mock-up engine, the playback engine here in Sibelius does not know what to do. You know, like it just starts to build and oh yeah, right, like mezzo piano. Okay, 
And those dynamics need to be the same all throughout the entire section, right? And like, you sort of need to work this out a little bit too. Do you really want like really, really soft and yeah, just the balance right in here. The I mean, it's admirable to keep the winds behind the strings somewhat if you just really want them to warm up the tone in here, but it's still really a little bit too soft, I think. Um, yeah. And yeah, this needs to be clearer too about like where your destination is dynamically. Okay. Um, yeah, so this contrabassoon is really going to stand out. Bum bum. And you've got the pizzicato in here uh, from the double bass. So you have that sense of like punctuation at the beginning and then a longer tone following. Uh, but it's, you know, you could also get this note on bass clarinet and it would be a lot clearer and less like um, um, kind of rustic. There's a sort of a rustic kind of slightly grunty quality to the contrabassoon. So um, you get like a clearer, cleaner, uh, more piano-like sustained tone from the bass clarinet, right? So that's what I would actually recommend there instead of contrabassoon if you want the, it to be lighter, right? And not so buzzy down there. Okay, so here you go to Celesta and uh, first clarinet. So Celesta, of course, sounding an octave higher. Um, and that's really cool, just as long as everybody shuts up, right? Because the Celesta is an incredibly soft instrument. As I've mentioned in other evaluations, it's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like a baby instrument, not just in it being able to play nursery rhymes or nursery songs, but also just like, it's almost like the baby of the orchestra. And if you surround it with all these big adults kind of shouting and carrying on, like nobody can hear the baby anymore. And, and there's, you know, in this case, the baby cannot scream louder than the adult okay but it's still cool um and i really like that you brought out da, 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 with your oboes really great that is exactly what's needed there and then um just fix the mezzo staccato here and it's fine dun 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 the in order for this to balance the horns need to be piano right because they will just the their solidity and their overtones will basically just erase the bassoons and the oboes. Uh, and then glocken, this little touch of glockenspiel in here is really cool. There is a heck of a lot of chimey instruments in this, but uh, you know, right here, I really do like this. Uh, dun, 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 boom, boom. And then you're answering it. I think maybe this, this is a little too much, right? Because you've already used a sort of a high tinkly instrument. Uh, and this is really not gonna be heard as much. Well, I mean, you know, you've got really soft winds, so yeah, excuse me. Um, I was uh, I was forgetting the uh, the context here. Yeah, so this will be heard, but maybe you should leave the block and spiel out here then, right? You know, just so that it isn't like too much of the same thing. <clears throat> this is all fine. It's really just the same thing again, but without horn, right? All right, and now bum 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 bum. Yeah, so mezzo piano plus trumpets. What if this was mezzo forte in the in the winds, right? So that they could, you know, da da, they could come in here nice and strong, and not get so lost, right? And then they could take over. It would be a much more even. See, like what you've got going on right here is really bright, strong, um, uh, brass right in here, and then you've got, um elegant but not as strong like just in terms of their of the presence of timbre is nowhere near as strong as what's going on in the, in the brass so this needs to come in stronger mezzo forte at least right so da 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 it's a nice trade off that way right and just a little touch of tuba at the bottom plus um plus the uh lower strings kind of interesting that you you know, say like here is where I would have used contrabassoon to blend better with the uh, double basses rather than tuba, which will, you know, is a very sonorous, you know, even at piano is a you know very sonorous, direct sound. 
Okay, now, uh, boom, da 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 There's a little bit, maybe a little bit too much of that trading off going on, right? Like you, you did it once, maybe just sort of commit to like one sound as you go forward, right? Because um, like then you have to deal with the same problems all over again. This needs to be mezzo forte once again, and, and you have to balance and everything else, right? So it's just, it's it's kind of a... You know, and then you and then you trade back, right? Okay, so so you know, without balancing this out, you could really hear in the mock-up how the um, the sound of the brass is just really sort of taking over this entire section in here, and just you know, after a while, it's just sort of oh, geez, you know, yeah, that's a lot of brass, right? So you really do have to balance this down, right? I would just really mark this, like I mean, you want this to be big and you want it to stand out and everything else, but it is going to stomp all over this harp. Right, so you have to decide if you want this harp to stand out and be an integral element, and then it's really going to have to be winds here, right? And the harp is going to have to go up to you know molto forte, and the um, I would say you know your your solo here in the oboe is also going to get swallowed by everything else that's going on here. So I would just say like this should be rescored so that it's really basically just winds. If you if you want this passage to work with the things that you've allocated, you know otherwise. Then I would just say go all in and ha have this turn into a trumpet solo, and and then you'll be better off because you'll actually you know you'll be able to hear the melody here instead of it just getting erased, right? And then but this is all fine here at the end, um, you know combined uh, horns plus um, <clears throat> bassoons and and oboe family, uh, but right here this by the time you get to here this should be piano rather than just like a mezzo forte underneath and this should be mezzo staccato to match the articulation okay and then we got a little bit of glockenspiel in there too that's cool now da 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 bum really really starting pretty high you know rather than in the staff it's starting an octave higher so it just really is going to cut over the top um, and I feel if you're going to do that, you need a little bit more body underneath the melody, right? Rather than it being dropped an octave. So you are here, this is the accompaniment that you've got is in the context of the melody being an octave lower, right? But so it's like really like there's a big gap right in there. And then you eventually fill it and then suddenly the filling of the gap plus adding the brass in there just makes it suddenly strong, right? There's no, it doesn't like it doesn't crescendo up into it like with the rest of the instruments. It's just suddenly there's this bright sound right in the middle there. Okay, so um, maybe this needs to also be rescored a bit so that the like that the uh, um, the accompaniment is higher or there's more filling in right in here, and maybe the brass starts in earlier as well, but really really softly and then pushes into this right, and then I think that you'd get a much more natural arc here. Okay, and but this is all cool here at the end. The the harp plus, you know, I mean, you really have a lot of, I mean, I'm, I I I could say that have a lot of harp, but it's not as much. But it's just, you know, uh, maybe you're relying on it too much. Right in here, it's probably not going to be very clear with like the force of the other instruments. But yeah, and then here the celesta is fine. Okay. Now, as far as pizzicato. Um, like this whole LV thing, it kind of doesn't make any sense, right? Like a, you know, the the kind of the sostenuto note on an eighth note, right? It's it's easier just to score a, a half note, you know what I mean? And this right P sos S O S for sostenuto, right? And then I think it's just much much clearer and it's less fiddly to look at. I mean, look at how. You know, imagine having a row of bars like this and just having them all be like um, half notes. How much easier that is to read than what this what is scored here, right? And just like keeping it as simple as possible, I think is really important. Now on the next page, more cool stuff. Like, you know, I, I know I'm just like ripping this to bits, you know, and like saying, hey, try this here, rescore that, and so on and so forth. But, you know, that doesn't take away from the fact, Cameron, that this is a, such a cool score. I mean, like, there's nothing, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the overall ideas that you're trying to do here. And like the basic approach is just like refining that. <clears throat> and I think here, like, you can just dispense with the crescendo and diminuendo text, and you can just go to hairpins there, 
I'm just taking a quick look at that in the original score. Yeah, so and there are crescendo and diminuendo, um, like writing in there. Um, so yeah, probably at this point you can just like, you know, just use straight hairpins. All right, so this I really, really liked, and I especially liked the bell, the tubular bell in there. That was really cool. And then let this little da dung, that's really nice. Okay, <clears throat> so how is it executed? Bum, 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 bum. We've got um, Celesta doubling first violins. Da, 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 da. Bum, 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 bum. And then you have Piccolo take over. And wow, you're just really, really going going very very high there so going all the way up to a sharp but you have to understand you're going diminuendo there's no destination dynamic here but assuming you're going down to piano so it's going to be difficult for you know that i mean it is possible to get a softer high a sharp but it still is just a you know like i mentioned before it's just kind of like kind of like trying to cram a lego into your ear it's just there's a there's a kind of a um squareness a kind of a blockiness and cuttingness to the to the um to really really high piccolo pitches right um maybe if there had been some way of like well i don't know you're already going to use um artificial harmonics at the end but you know maybe this could have been done just a little bit differently i don't know i mean like maybe starting an octave lower or something like that i mean i hate to say that because it's such a great idea but yeah, just like this whole thing, right? Like the destination there, maybe it can be inferred, you know, or maybe it can just be played. It's already gonna be played on glockenspiel, right? So you don't really even need to state it with the, the piccolo, right? The piccolo can even drop out or just like, just play an octave lower. Okay. Um, yeah, and just, and once again, just like the simplest possible um, pizzicato, you know, rather than this, you know, LV stuff. Just just write longer, um, you know, longer pitches. I mean, it. I mean, I mean, this basically to me, this is a quarter note pizzicato, right? Or maybe like a dotted quarter note. Okay, <clears throat> but just back to the scoring. I like the support here from very soft winds. I think that makes a whole lot of sense, and just the way that it pushes into this next phrase is good. You have to understand by the time you get to right here, right, you, you, we really need to know how big you got, right? So it's better just to get rid of the text and then write, you know, just bring up um, the uh, the hairpins, right, and make them visible, and then say what the destination dynamic is here, right? So what is the destination dynamic? If this is as loud as mezzo forte in the piccolo, then basically just forget about the celesta nobody's going to hear it right but this will work on you know along with the piccolo like blending into the piccolo and and um overlapping that is a really cool idea so it's just it's just that last note just feels like it's going to be less subtle than you think okay i mean it you know at best it's going to have this kind of beautiful desperate quality to it kind of hanging on up there <laughs> right um but it may not have the you know the the arc like we have two opposite things working here you know we have the diminuendo getting softer and we have the notes getting higher right so like at the end one of them has to sacrifice a little okay but i still love the way that the glockenspiel clears things up okay and i mean just really is a just a beautiful passage as it's scored, it just might be maybe need a little bit of tweaking, right? Okay, and now we're getting to our wrap up. You know, um, da 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 da, bum 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 bum. That's just nice, you know. And, and like basically, in terms of a, um, you know, kind of like a um, to give it that extra edge, you're adding Celesta. So you know, once again, I I sort of feel like if there could be some variation in the different, you know, in the different instruments, like, you know, like Celesta and then maybe harp and then maybe antique cymbals and then glockenspiel or a combination or something like that. If there could be some variety in there, because I just feel like 
Celesta, you know, and, you know, following the previous Celesta and so on and so forth. After a while, you just kind of like think that's just there's a you know it makes for a very sweet cup of coffee, right? To add that much sweetener to it. So just think about variety of you know of chiming sounds, which you know you really built this passage around, and I I don't want you to change it, but like what a, what about some other possibilities in there, like antique symbols or or you know or trading off with glockenspiel or or maybe like um harp harmonics would work good to score everything an octave lower and just add the harmonic node to it and it'll sound an octave higher okay and it's interesting too that you are <clears throat> you're balancing this a little bit you're coming back down in volume very quickly and i think that you don't need to have these grayscale you should ba basically tell the player that you really want it to be soft quick right and i think that it should be um, the arc of your dynamics here should be uniform, right? So that it is really softer all together by the time this starts, right? Or as it starts, rather than just waiting longer to get, you know, to control your dynamics. All right, and then ba bum 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 da 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 da. Okay. Um, and then things are getting stronger and stronger, but it's, I like the fact that you just, you know, you add a little bit of mass and your melody note gets a little louder, but you kind of control the background. And that's, that is really, I think that is the way to go for this approach that you are doing right in here, because it keeps all of this really audible. <clears throat> now, whether it's wise to use, um, to use the same melody instrument as the top of the little rose petals is you know i i would just say well you know i mean do you really need to go all the way up to that that high a up there on piccolo okay but anyways but it does work more or less okay and then you know these these nice big bright clarinets um they're going to you know so long as they are doubled by the the uh, the violins, then they're they're nice and they add a nice uh, kind of a, a a very muscular edge here to the violins without getting too warm, which is nice. And this is yeah, all of these this sort of brass and lower wind chorale stuff in here is very very neat. All right, and then we get to the final little bit here. Bum 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 bum. Okay. Now, um, I think you may have forgotten that the music goes da, 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 da. It ends on the sixth, right? Um, so you kind of left out that last note right in there. That, um, yeah. So, um, so that it, it sort of takes away from it a little bit, but, um, yeah. So, like, just, just reality check in here is that the sustain on harp and celesta is not going to last this long, right? It's um, it's it's only going to last about like maybe three bars, and it's going to be extremely soft by the time you get to the end, right? So, you, you know, maybe you could like do this kind of thing. Right, and then just right. I mean, this is the essential effect that you're gonna get, right? It's just like letting it, you know, letting it die away into nothing. Um, really, what's gonna carry through are those same pitches on your winds, right? And and you've got like your violas are doing nothing. They could be playing some of these pitches like as harmonics or you know, just very softly doubling, right? Um, I will say that it's such a cool idea, though, to, um, um, you know, to have the bum bum be played by timpani. Uh, that was just, that is such a cool idea. I really, really enjoyed that, right? And look, there's no need to, um, to do this LV stuff with the little, you know, the little incomplete ties. Um, you know, what you really need here is just like, how long is this note going to be? If it's going to be three beats long or it's going to be the end of this bar, then all you need is just a big old legato mark and just have full value of all the notes, right? 
So, you know, quarter, quarter, quarter. And then um, uh, half note tied to a, <clears throat> a quarter note. And then maybe a half note tied to a dotted quarter note or dotted, dotted half note, right? So just like that and just put a big, um, put a big old uh, slur over it. And that is, that is fine, right? That is just a lot easier to read. I, I think you're really overusing these like LV things, right? The, you know, just, you know, go easy on that. Um, it's, it's really not needed in this context. So, yeah. So, um, you know, once again, just really, really enjoyable score. And I know I picked it to pieces, but that doesn't mean that this score um, is not well orchestrated. It just means that it just needs a bit of coaching, right? To get it up to where you need it to be. I just want you to, you know, I just want to help you improve this work as much as you possibly can and, and you know, feel more confident about it. And, you know, hopefully, like, you could maybe adjust a few things, think over a few things, maybe edit some of the um, some of the dynamics a bit. And <clears throat> if there's any chance at all of you getting this performed, read, um, you know, anything like that, then I think that it would be uh, it would be a great you know I, I I don't see you know once once this was tweaked a bit, I don't see any reason why anybody wouldn't want to do it. I mean, unless they don't have a Celesta or something like that. Uh, many is the time that I had to be the Celesta player on a um, on an instrument that was not a Celesta indeed, but it was a um, an electronic keyboard that had a Celesta sound, and that has happened quite a few times with me in like um, kind of crossover situations and um, kind of educational concerts and so on. Of course, not in a not in a real sit down concert would that be that much of an issue, but. But yeah, I mean, you've thought of a lot of things, you've thought of a lot of balance issues and so on. I hope that I've clarified a few more for you. I think that right in here, if you want a, a really beautiful, fine balance between the winds and the brass, you just really are gonna have to bring your brass down a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, everything is playing soft anyways. It wouldn't hurt you to put a pianissimo on, uh, on this. And then you can just have your strings play piano as well, right? Instead of mezzo piano to try to bring out the violas more. Then it will all work fine with the with the winds that the way you've got it, right? Um, <clears throat> I think it clarifies things to put slur marks over like uh, phrases like this in Celesta and in Glockenspiel. Just you know, gives it a, um, a kind of a more integrated look, and the the player can see what they're doing a little bit better. And you know, and then of course, like right in here, like just you just have to think about better. Um, a better approach to slurring that that means that the you know that that shows that you're thinking about them bowing right um, you know so so like maybe um, uh, slur 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 right then up down up down right and then like by putting one entire slur over this. I mean, this is not impossible, but just really awkward. By putting an entire slur over this, you're basically telling them that you want to want them to push harder with the bow in the middle of of one bow, right? But I'm sure that what you really intend here is, you know, da da, right? Just really to bow on this, so you should just make the slur this long and then this long, right? Right, and then, then just the same. You're just really taking all of the pep out of those accents by, uh, by making the slur go across them. Right. Um, one thing that you should think about, just as a general thing, in you know when you have like slurs that cover one or two bars, and you're transcribing and stuff like that, and, and this also goes for wind. When it goes across, when the slur goes across the downbeat, right? You should just have this automatic thing where you think about like. Do I want to hear the downbeat? And I've mentioned this in a couple of other evaluations, and I'll mention it here too. And that is, you know, if you are at like say a wind quintet, 
a rehearsal or string quartet rehearsal and it's been a lot of this you know there are a lot of things in your score where people are just crossing like the slurs are going across the uh the bar all the time and you know who knows where there's really no emphasis on the downbeat anywhere and you know one of the players says where's the downbeat and maybe you should rethink how you are phrasing things right for those players um you know, like, like, could these be uh, mezzo staccato? You know, dun 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 dun, as opposed to just ba. Um, you know, could this be a, a nice strong down bow? Da da, right? Or even could they just all be individual notes? Da 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 da. There's nothing wrong with that, right? It's it's emphatic and it's a bit, you know. It's it's less elegant, but certainly gets the message across, right? So so those are some things to think about, and you know, of course, we talked a little bit about um, you know about comparative dynamics and and everything else, and you know, and if there was any other takeaway that I wanted you to have from this, that I think would just be really important for your scoring, and that is just the quality of of sound in terms of balance, because it's not just like you know always bring your brass down and you put your winds up when you want them to blend. It's not just that it is a question of them playing louder. It's a question that their quality of tone, you know, the brightness and the edge that the brass have has a way of like just infiltrating everything and really kind of taking, you know, affecting the color of the other instruments and even overwhelming them when you have, when you think you have a balance, right? So, you know, that like, there's nothing more noticeable than brass players when they're attempting to sound soft <laughs> you know like like they just like have this discreet little you know background pad and they're really hoping nobody pays attention to them this is especially true with with trumpets right but if the music isn't scored in a way to hide or absorb their sound they're just going to stick right out right and so you just have to you know you have to accept that that is going to happen in places like this, like where you've got the, or you've got everybody playing the same dynamic, right? So, um, so just think about a lot of those things, okay? And, and, you know, Cameron, you got a lot of talent and imagination here, so don't take it the wrong way if I've really picked this over, but, but, you know, just like, you know, think about some of those things, take whatever is useful and just throw away what isn't, you know, or, or save that for another day. Um, and, and wow, it would be great to see another score from you next year in the 2021 orchestration challenge. Um, and with that, I will bring my long day of evaluating. It's just so enjoyable. It was great to sit down with five scores in a row. That's, that's, a, that's a record for me. Um, just really enjoyed evaluating everybody's scores today. And, and especially, you know, thanks like to you, Cameron, for, you know, my last evaluation of the day for your support and your you know and and for being a part of the community it's it's very much appreciated and um you know i i just really hope that your orchestration chops get stronger and stronger <laughs>